Hey, so this is part two in a little series I've made about the topic of Meniere's disease. So I'll put a link below this video to part one, so you can go back and review that if you need to. Uh, so as you'll probably recall, uh, the problem with Meniere's disease is there's an excess of fluid in the inner ear. And that excess fluid causes the symptoms that we see. Uh, the vertigo attacks, the fluctuating changes in hearing, uh, the pressure and the roaring noise that people hear inside of their ears. So uh, the initial treatments that we do for Meniere's disease are an attempt to lessen the amount of fluid in the inner ear. So uh, unfortunately, we don't really have a specific way to do this. So the idea is we try and just limit the amount of fluid in the entire body. Um, and th there's simple ways to do this. So uh, the simplest is just to do a low salt diet. Uh, so the more salt you eat, uh, the more fluid is retained in your body. So by limiting the amount of salt intake, uh, we limit the amount of fluid in the body. And by default, we limit the amount of fluid in the inner ear. Um, so that can actually be helpful in and of itself, just to limit uh, salt. And typically it's less than 2000 milligrams of sodium per day is what's recommended. Um, you know, the other initial medical treatment we try for this problem is uh, to put patients on a diuretic or a water pill. Um, and typically the one that I will use is called diazide. And uh, it actually is a combination of two different medications, uh, hydrochlorothiazide and, uh, oh shoot, I'm blanking on the other name. But uh, anyway, it's two medicines uh, that both basically make you eliminate uh, sodium and other electrolytes in your urine. And by doing that, you, you basically pee out a lot of fluid. So again, we're getting fluid out of the body and we're by default then getting fluid out of the inner ear. Um, and, you know, just doing relatively simple things like this, uh, we can control symptoms well for a lot of Meniere's patients. Um, you know, other, you know, sort of initial steps are just managing the symptoms. So typically uh, steroids can be very helpful at kind of controlling those bad vertigo attacks and uh, other ear symptoms. Um, and steroids can be given either by mouth or actually injected through the eardrum into the middle ear. Uh, so these are kind of the most sort of the conservative, not really rocking the boat too much treatments. Now, as you get above and beyond this, uh, you know, we're talking about people who are failing on the low salt diet and the, the, the water pill uh, and continuing to have a lot of symptoms. Um, and in this case, uh, you know, typically I don't do these treatments, but there are different surgeries and other procedures that can be done on the inner ear. Um, some of them trying to lower the amount of fluid, but in worst case scenario, some of these surgeries are actually meant to uh, either obliterate the inner ear or cut the nerve connections between the inner ear and the brainstem in order to prevent the, uh, you know, the abnormal signaling from the inner ear that's causing all of the symptoms. Uh, so, and for, you know, the, the rare patient I see who's in that situation, uh, there are some good uh, ear surgeons and specialists uh, in Austin and San Antonio that I can use to refer to those patients uh, when necessary. Fortunately, most people do well with uh, the simpler things, just like the low salt diet, the water pill. Um, and over time, Meniere's disease typically kind of almost burns itself out uh, to where the really bad symptoms aren't happening anymore. Uh, uh, in the long run. And we're talking usually about eight to 10 years after the onset of the disease. So anyway, I hope that's helpful for you. Just gives you a little brief overview of the uh, options for treatment of Meniere's disease. Uh, and I'll see you in the next video.